And speaking of innovation, there is talk of a major invention in the world of semiconductors. Let me underline the word major. Some are calling it the holy grail of chips, a superconductor. So what exactly is the buzz all about? Time for a quick science lesson. In the past, we've told you what a semiconductor is. It's a material through which you can pass electricity. You can regulate the flow, meaning electricity will pass in some conditions, but it won't otherwise. Now, this property makes them crucial to make electronics. Cars, mobiles, headphones, weapons, all of them have semiconductors inside, what we call chips. But this flow of electricity is not absolute. There is some resistance. And that's where superconductors are different. They allow electricity to pass with zero resistance. Let's try an example. Imagine you're driving on a straight highway. Your car is the electricity. The highway is the conductor. Now imagine there are traffic signals in between. Naturally, you would have to stop. So you would be slower and you would lose fuel and time. That's what a semiconductor is like. With superconductors, there are no traffic signals. It's pedal to the metal. You save time and fuel. Scientists in South Korea claim to have created such a substance, a superconductor. They're calling it LK99. You make it by introducing copper atoms to a mineral called lead apatite. Two studies have been published so far. The initial one has three authors. The second one has six. Other labs in the US and China are already testing it out. They're seeing if the claim checks out. We'll get to that in a bit. But first, what are the real world applications of a superconductor? How can we use them? Again, let's use two examples. We've all seen how power grids work. They transfer electricity using semiconductors, which means resistance. And this resistance results in some power being wasted. Distribution loss. No such problem with superconductors. You won't lose power while transferring it. Imagine how much electricity we would save. Another example is gadgets. Computing time is proportional to the speed of electricity. The faster you can conduct, the faster the results. Again, superconductors can help. They could make your computers and phones much faster. So why haven't we made them before? Well, superconductors do exist. We use them in MRI machines and medical imaging. But all of them have one problem. They need extremely low or extremely high temperatures to work. One example is caprate. It's a superconductor, but it can only work at minus 135 degrees Celsius. Your colleague at office cannot handle 38 degrees. Good luck with minus 135. My point is it's not possible. You need superconductors that work at room temperature, which is why LK99 is so important. The Korean scientists say it does work at room temperature. Do others agree? Three labs in China have managed to create LK99 and they're reporting different results, all three of them. One of them showed LK99 levitating over a magnet. Only superconductors do that, they levitate. Other materials spin like a compass. I guess that's a plus point. The second lab did not observe zero resistance. The third lab did, but at minus 130, 163 degrees Celsius. So that's a no-go. The fact is we need to study this material more. Even if it is a superconductor, that's just half the job done. You need to figure out a lot more, like how much electricity can it conduct? How do you mass produce it? How do you embed these things in devices? So we have a long way to go. It's a long shot still. But there is good news and bad news here. The bad news is that such superconductor claims are not new. Most of them end up disappointing. It's so common that there's a word for it. They, they call it USO, Unidentified Superconductor Object. The good news is there is nothing unnatural about it. The laws of physics support the idea of a superconductor. They can be made. It's all about stumbling on the right material. Even if LK99 is not that holy grail, it is still valuable. Each failed invention gives a lot of information, information that could help us build a working superconductor.